an inverse ETF replicates the opposite performance of a particular index or investment. When the underlying investment goes down, the inverse ETF goes up. Of course, the opposite is also true. When the underlying investment goes up, the inverse ETF goes down. The ETF has a negative correlation with the underlying investment or benchmark. In other words, the relationship between the two is such that when one goes up, the other goes down. For example, an inverse oil ETF replicates the opposite performance of the price of oil. The ETF would go down when the price of oil goes up. Why would someone want to invest in this type of ETF? Well, simply put, if an investor thinks that a market or commodity is overpriced and due for a correction, she can take advantage of the price decline with an inverse ETF. If the price of oil drops from $100 to $95, a 5% decline, an inverse oil ETF would go up by about 5% before expenses. Inverse ETFs are risky for a couple of reasons. First, the long-term trend for capital markets is to appreciate in value rather than depreciate. And an inverse ETF is essentially a bet against long-term trends. This may be okay for an investor taking a short-term position, if they feel something is overvalued, or to hedge a certain risk, like an appreciating Canadian dollar for foreign investments. But it's not a good buy-and-hold strategy. The other reason that makes an inverse ETF risky is that their performance against the underlying investment is reset on a regular basis often daily. So the performance of the ETF is based on the performance of the underlying investment over the course of one day, and then resets before the start of the next trading day. This would be okay if the underlying investment declined in a very straight line over time, but markets don't usually move that way. There is volatility, and investments have positive days and negative days which means that the price of an inverse ETF that resets daily will gradually move away from the underlying investment. On top of that, there are management expenses to deal with. And as little as they may be, they do eat into the performance of ETFs, especially for those that reset on a daily basis. The bottom line is, inverse ETFs don't make for buy and hold investors, which is why MFDA representatives are not able to offer them to their clients.